Okay, folks, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to create this uh, material for this table here. And as you can see, we have different layers for this. Uh, the first layer is this uh, fine wood that we have. And then we have uh, these uh, dirt layers uh, in the nooks and crannies that is darker than the original version. We have another layer of dirt, like for example, here uh, or here. And there are basically a more desaturated version of this wood and another layer of this material is this uh, sort of dust layer on top of the material uh, and we're going to be creating this in this uh, tutorial so let's go ahead and actually do that uh, one thing happened and unfortunately I recorded the tutorial for creating the material for this side table and the wood material and unfortunately uh, the sound had some problem for uh, most parts and I'm uh, ha I kind of have to re record the tutorial and as you can see we have created uh, some of these materials uh, and you can go ahead and watch the tutorial for them uh, in our upcoming lessons but uh, in this lesson uh, I'm going to be uh, basically re-record the tutorial for creating this uh, side table here okay so let's go ahead and uh, start working on this one I'm going to create a new very advanced material this is going to be our, uh, let's rename it to table wood. Open this material up. Great. I'm going to my first diffuse layer. And yeah, let's use this texture wood 06. I'm going to my uh, apply filter shader and I'm going to decrease this saturation to something like negative 13. Okay. Great. And also, let's go ahead and make it. A bit lighter and this is our diffuse shader and let's go ahead and copy and drag this to our specular layer 2 I'm just going to decrease the saturation completely and let's decrease the effect and the overall reflection also I'm also going to increase the frontal IR to 3 and uh, decrease my reflection glassiness to 75.75 okay so uh, let's obviously the brightness should be something like 40% here. Okay, great. So that's our base material. Let's go ahead and apply to our uh, side table here. So there we go. And this is what we have. I think the pattern is a bit too big. So I'm going to select this guy and maybe reduce this. Let's go to something like 30% and see how this is going to work. I think this is better even though it's getting a bit repetitive in some parts so let's go to something like 50% okay I think that's enough and we can go ahead and maybe let's see offset these parts okay I think that's not too bad and basically this is our first layer let's rec uh, take a quick look and see what we have not too bad at all now I want to add two different dirt layers uh, let's create our first dirt layer here and let's see I'm going to just use this shader here so let's actually copy this channel and I'm going to paste it here and I'm just going to make it much more darker and a bit desaturated something like this would be enough and just uh, to see everything a bit better I'm going to enable my diffuse layer number two let's go ahead to uh, a pinkish sort of color here something like this and in our material weight I'm going to use uh, my V-Ray dirt shader okay let's increase this wall to something like 15 and uh, let's see what we're gonna get just by this change so let's quickly apply this material here and make sure to mix the texture okay and you know what we can uh, quickly use some radius uh, texture here so let's go ahead and maybe use this dirt here and also let's go ahead and see how this dirt is going to be applied so I'm going to create a quick 
C4D dummy material 304. Well, let's go ahead and apply it here. So that's, that's how it works. Let me decrease this value to something like 25, 25. Uh, let's go to cubic maybe. Uh, that looks a bit better. Let's go to maybe 15, 15. Okay, I guess 25 is a good value. Great. So let's uh, apply this material on this one and delete the original one and let's go ahead and just mix the texture and see how this uh, how our first layer of dirt basically works. Uh, we just have one big problem and as you can see uh, where this uh, decorative ship or this uh, cage here uh, where they stands on top of our table the dirt shader basically take those into consideration and tries to uh, create the dirt effect based on the uh, basically the intersection that happens between the table and between them in order to avoid that we can go ahead and simply in our dirt shader and enable the uh, consider the same object only okay so that's about it let's go quickly maybe render out this part here again and as you can see now it's uh, much more accurate great we have if you come back here and render it again so this is what we have for our first uh, dirt shader great now let's go ahead and quickly uh, create a duplicate for this one I'm just going to uh, make a few adjustment completely desaturated and maybe make it a bit more brighter something like this would be nice and just for examination let's go ahead and actually make it uh, to be a green color also I'm going to uh, my dirt shader again and also invert the normals great let's go ahead and uh, see what we are getting from what uh, we have here so let's go ahead and render this. Uh, we haven't applied that, sorry. So let's go ahead and actually quickly apply this. So I'm going to control drag and apply this one here. Great. So let's go ahead and render this. So as you can see the green color basically dominates everything here and it's uh, too much really. So what I'm going to do is come here to my material weight. First of all decrease the radius and I'm going to increase the fall off and the distribution. And by increasing the fall off and distribution basically uh, we contain uh, our dirt shader to the very edges so it will be limited to only uh, edges and uh, it won't uh, spread that much. So let's see what we're going to get uh, using this uh, changes and after these changes. There we go. As you can see now, they are limited to the very edges, and we can see also the uh, pink dirt that we had as our first dirt shader. Great. Nice. Now let's go ahead and uh, basically turn off our. Diffuse layer number two for both, and turn on our second diffuse layer, our first diffuse layer, sorry. And let's just get a bit closer and see if we can spot those uh, dirts. <laughs> so it's uh, kind of hard to see the effect of these um, uh, dirt shaders, even though the subtlety uh, when you are developing materials is always your strongest suit. So you don't have to make it really really obvious uh, if uh, I was doing it for a real job it would possibly just this but in order to uh, make sure you uh, can understand the whole concept a bit better uh, I wanna for example make this uh, you can see the dirt the nukes and crannies uh, which is our first uh, dirt shader are getting darker and this is uh, definitely using our first dirt shader and here if you take a look they are getting uh, these parts are getting a bit more desaturated 
uh, comparing to our base material. Now I want to give you one tip, uh, it's going to be uh, very useful for you. If you go to your V-Ray Dirt Shader, guys, uh, come down, come up there, you have this color map um, section that could be used to actually increase the contrast of your V-Ray Dirt effect. So what you can do is you can go ahead and turn on your color map, make sure your uh, spline preset is a uh, linear, sorry, and I can go ahead and create two points very in close ap approximation to each other. And this way we can basically increase the effect of the uh, whole dirt uh, shader and increase the contrast. Now, uh, right now we're just affecting the red channel and in order to affect everything, I'm going to set this thing as driver and uh, set the green and blue channel as my driven absolute layers. And hopefully by doing this, uh, you will be able to basically increase the effect of that dirt effect and make it a bit more obvious. There are some uh, other tricks uh, which are a bit more advanced and hopefully we're going to be covering, but uh, the uh, change is quite obvious. Uh, as you can see now, this uh, saturation uh, is, a de this desaturation and decolorization is much more obvious and uh, than what we had before changing the color mapping for this dirt shader. So you can do this if you saw your, your dirt shader isn't that obvious, but uh, okay, that's nice. Now, uh, the last change would be the dust that we have on top of our table. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. So, uh, <clears throat> great. So let's go ahead and create a new very advanced material. And this is going to be, let's see, this is going to be our uh, table dirt. This is going to be our table dirt inverted. Sorry. And this is going to be our table dust. So table dust. Let's go here. For the color, I'm going to be using um, this gray. Great. And for the material weight, we're going to be using uh, this uh, C4D fall off. You can go ahead and use the V-Ray fall off, but uh, I think I'm a bit more comfortable with the C4D's fall off. So let's go ahead. I'm going to change this color to white. Okay. And let's go ahead and invert the knots. I'm going to change the space from object to world. And uh, you can see the direction is uh, a Y positive. I'm just going to make these guys a bit closer together. So something like this I think would be nice. Great. Even a bit closer, something like this. Now let's go ahead and apply it on top of our other materials and make sure to enable the mix texture. And let's go ahead and render this part of our table and see what we're going to get. Now hopefully this dirt and uh, this dust should be applied just uh, to the polys that facing upward basically because of the fall off that we have. And if you take a look at our render, uh, this is exactly what's happening here. You can see all the parts, all the polys that facing upward basically getting this dark de dust uh, here. You can see here's the um, top table and here if you take a look closely at these parts at the legs, you can see the polys that are actually facing upward getting this same uh, dust effect. Okay. Now obviously this is a bit too much and I'm going to control it with uh, another uh, layer of texture. So let me show you what I want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and use this dummy material to see the distribution of the texture that we're going to be using to control our dust, which is going to be this dirt. And I'm just going to apply it to my table. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to change it to cubic mapping and uh, Let's see, 25, 25, maybe 15. Okay, that's much more better, I guess. Nice pattern. Let's go ahead and uh, offset it a bit. Let's see. I think something like this is nice. Cool stuff, great. 
let's see 275 I think it would possibly make more sense let's see I think this is not too bad great so let's go ahead and actually apply this uh, dirt on this one instead of the original one and delete the original one and make sure to mix the texture now in order to add a bit more irregularity to this uh, dust uh, layer I'm going to use the diffuse layer transparency which controls the transparency of your diffuse and material which controls the transparency of your whole material so that's a difference uh, first of all I'm going to increase the roughness uh, to make the material a bit more realistic and let's see we're going to uh, use this dirt 16 here and let's go ahead and invert these here and that's what we have at the moment and if I go ahead and render it let's see what we're gonna get so let's render this part only uh, we see if there is any changes that needs to be made but hopefully there wouldn't be any need to any change you know when you create material that's your hope but sometimes you need to change some stuff and you tweak for hours and hours to get what you want okay so as you can see we have this very nice dusty effect uh, looks like someone has been trying to <laughs> clean the top of our table but uh, not with too much of success obviously they haven't done a good job and some of the parts of our table still have this uh, dust and the reason we added the dust to this just part because dust uh, basically accumulates uh, on the faces that looking upward so it would be more realistic to add it just to this part okay actually I think this is much more realistic and very very nice uh, material but if you want to decrease the uh, overall transparency of this layer what you can do is obviously uh, you can go ahead and increase your white points and this way you can basically uh, have a have a less bright whites you can see let's go ahead to something like two I guess it would be enough let's go ahead and render this part again and as you can see by applying materials and stacking materials you can go ahead and develop uh, very complex shaders and once again I want to talk about the uh, difference between blend material a very blend material and stacking you can see for uh, these four stacked material that we have here we use different UV mapping for each of them and that's why uh, we wouldn't be able to do it if we you if we use the very blend material so that's why I'm uh, I like the very uh, the stacking system uh, and it's really great great okay it's very nice I really love it great guys so that's about this uh, material and hopefully you learned something from it so see you in the next lesson.